today's presentation. Before we begin, our host Atlantic Health System and NYU Langone would like everyone who is joining us on this call today, but not part of the official speaking program, to please deactivate your cameras and have your microphones muted if you have not done so already. Today's event will feature a brief speaking program and then a question and answer session, which is open to credentialed media only. These proceedings are being recorded, and so if members of the media need a copy after the event, please reach out to the public relations team members from either organization. With that being said, let us begin today's program by introducing our first speaker, Dr. Douglas Arbatier, Vice President, Service Lines, Atlantic Health System. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Dr. Doug Arbatier, and as mentioned, I'm the Vice President of Service Lines here at the Atlantic Health System. I have the pleasure in my role of working with our exceptional medical directors and executive directors throughout uh, Atlantic Health. Um, and that includes our cardiology team, one of the leaders whom you're gonna meet very soon. I wanna thank all of my colleagues and Dr. Montgomery for joining us this afternoon for what we all feel is a very exciting announcement. Today, we're here to share that Atlantic Health System and NYU Langone, two of the most respected and well-known names in healthcare in the tri-state area, are partnering to provide patients with access to heart and liver transplants and the all important coordinated care that goes into transplantation before and after the heart and liver transplants. As you will hear today, organ transplantation is very complicated. It's difficult for our patients and their loved ones. It's difficult for the healthcare team taking care of them because of the complexity, but often that complex care is the difference between life and death for our patients. Our new partnership is going to deliver seamless care by the renowned NYU Langone Transplant Institute and the nationally ranked Atlantic Health Systems Heart Care Program at Morristown Medical Center's Gagnon Cardiovascular Institute. It'll also, of course, involve the pioneering liver services at Atlantic's Overlook Medical Center. We're very proud of all of these locations of service. I will let Dr. Montgomery from NYU share a little bit more information about this uh, new program and about his program at Langone. But needless to say, NYU Langone's reputation in the world of transplantation is second to none. At Atlantic Health System, our team of 18,000 team members and over 4,800 affiliated physician, physicians care for nearly 1 million unique lives every year across 400 sites of care and growing. And that includes our seven hospitals. But ultimately we know that it's best for patients to receive their care in a way that is most convenient and seamless for them. And whenever possible, close to home. When they're closer to home near their loved ones, they do better. I will let Dr. Montgomery and two of our wonderful clinical leaders from Atlantic Health System um, share some of the more significant details about this program shortly, but specifically it'll be how our two medical centers will partner with the Transplant Institute. I wanna say that speaking on behalf of the entire Atlantic Health System, we could not be more proud of this initiative. It's a wonderful partnership that will benefit the care of patients in the many communities that we serve at Atlantic Health. Thank you again for joining us. Congratulations to the entire team and to our new partners at the NYU Langone Transplant Institute. Thank you. Our next speaker is Dr. Robert Montgomery. Chair of the Department of Surgery at NYU Langone and the Director of the NYU Langone Transplant Institute. Well, thank you. So, you know, first, I just want to say um, how thrilled NYU Langone Health and the Transplant Institute um, are um, at partnering with um, Atlantic Health in this way. This new partnership will uh, elevate transplant care to thousands of New Jersey families and, and no doubt save countless lives. Our team um, of uh, surgeons, um, physicians, nurse practitioners, coordinators, pharmacists, nutritionists, and social workers are equally excited to offer world-class care to patients at Atlantic Health and advance our joint mission to expand access to organ transplantation. And we believe um, that more livers and hearts from um, donors uh, that are New Jersey residents um, will go to New Jersey recipients as a result of this partnership. 
The NYU Langone Transplant Institute will um, provide comprehensive services um, to um, heart and liver transplant patients at the world-renowned uh, Morris, Morristown Medical Center and Overlook Medical Center, respectively. Dr. Singh, um, the medical director of um, the Atlantic Medical Group um, Heart Success Team, um, will provide pre- and post-operative care to the patients um, after they receive their, their transplants at NYU Langone Hospital. And in a similar way, um, Dr. Um, Harmeet Kalia, um, who is a board certified hepatologist and member of our faculty, will deliver the same um, high level of care before and after the transplant uh, to the uh, liver patients at Overlook uh, Medical Center. Heart and liver transplant surgical services will be provided uh, by the NYU Langone um, Health Team um, at our Manhattan site, um, but much of the care um, will occur in New Jersey and the patients will um, be able to go back to their homes um, and the familiar faces of um, the healthcare providers who um, have taken care of them many times through a, a prolonged period of, um, uh, of assessment and uh, management of their end organ disease. This clinical affiliation um, and physician sharing agreement brings together two highly effective organizations, NYU Langone and Atlantic Health. With our nationally recognized transplant program and the exceptional heart care program in Morristown in the pioneering liver um, program at Overlook. NYU Langone um, has the fastest transplant rate in the region. So that means that um, patients who are listed get organs faster than any other um, hospital in this region. Our heart program has been rated number one in the country for three years running by the, the um, publicly reported metrics of the Scientific Registry of Transplantation, also known as the SRTR. And while um, NYU Langone um, uh, will uh, deliver the actual transplant care, the patients will also enjoy the single bedrooms of our new state-of-the-art Kimmel Pavilion that um, uh, is really truly a wonderful uh, place to recover. I can speak personally um, about that. And um, our uh, shorter recovery times really than any other transplant program in the region will allow the patients to get back to um, New Jersey sooner um, to the care of the teams that they've been working with in many cases for years or months and back to their families, most importantly. And, you know, on a personal note, um, I received a heart transplant at NYU Langone Hospital from uh, my team in 2018, less than a year after um, we opened our doors. Um, I was faced with the challenge of what was then a, a, a daunting um, waiting time in the Northeast and the real likelihood that I wouldn't live long enough to receive a life-saving heart. <clears throat> Moving to another part of the country um, where the, the wait times traditionally have been shorter was encouraged actually um, for me by many of my colleagues. Um, that would have had a really a devastating impact on my family um, and would have been probably a six month to a year um, period of time living in some other part of the country that was unfamiliar. With the innovative protocols of our Transplant Institute and our relentless pursuit of finding organs in a timely manner for our patients, I was able really to enjoy the best of both worlds, New York quality and Midwest short waiting times. 
And I became the uh, 24th patient transplanted at um, NYU Langone and had a wonderful um, recovery close to home with my family at my side. I accepted a hepatitis C positive um, organ, uh, which most likely would have been um, discarded and enrolled in a, um, a cutting edge um, study. Um, and, you know, this sort of can do attitude and dedication that um, is going to be available through this affiliation can now be focused on patients in New Jersey. Um, and I couldn't be more excited for those patients and for their families um, and, and couldn't be more um, excited for um, this partnership. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Dr. Linda Gilham, the Dorothy and Lloyd Huck Chair of Cardiovascular Medicine at Morristown Medical Center and the Medical Director of the Cardiovascular Service Line for Atlantic Health System. I have to be unmuted for you to hear me. So thank you all for joining. I wanna start by thanking Dr. Montgomery and his heart transplant colleagues at NYU Longone for first of all, helping us build this wonderful NYU Morristown Medical Center Atlantic Health collaboration that we have over the last few years. Uh, I'd also like to thank the uh, NYU leadership and again, the heart transplant team at NYU for helping us formalize this agreement which is what we're here today to announce. First though, a few thank yous at the Morristown end. So Trisha O'Keefe, the president of Morristown Medical Center for her vision, leadership and support for our entire cardiovascular program, but for today in particular for our heart failure program. Second to Dr. Lewis Rubinson, the chief medical officer at Morristown Medical Center, again for his leadership support and expertise in critical care, which is a key component to be able to provide care for patients with advanced heart disease. I'd also like to send a special thank you to Neil and Lois Gagnon, whose name graces the front of the Gagnon Cardiovascular Institute, which is a 200 plus bed heart hospital on the Morristown Medical Center campus and the home to our advanced cardiac care services. Neil and Lois have been steadfast supporters for the entire cardiovascular program. And I'm very happy that they're able to join us today, personally grateful. Now, since this is all about heart failure and heart transplant, I also have to introduce, if you like, Dr. Abhi Singh, who directs heart failure, our heart success program is the term we use here at Morristown, as well as Alex Rentovich, who is a clinical director of heart failure at NYU Langone. Now, why heart transplant and why now? Well, some of you probably know, but perhaps some of you don't know that heart transplant is still the definitive therapy for patients with advanced heart failure. And currently there are over 6.2 million patients in this country who suffer from heart failure. Now that number is growing. Do all of them need transplant? No, but the number who need transplant is continuing to grow as well. So for many years, the number of donor hearts that were available to be transplanted was really capped at roughly 2,000. But recently, some developments, including those that Dr. Montgomery uh, alluded to, have changed that the number of donor hearts has expanded considerably, and with that, opportunities to perform heart transplantation. At Atlantic, we have always been committed to delivering patients the highest quality care. So when the opportunity arose to collaborate with NYU Langone, which shares Atlantic's commitment to quality care, uh, attention to detail and the patient experience, this was really a wonderful opportunity and definitely not one to be to missed. We're so happy that this has all worked out so well. Atlantic, prides itself on cardiac care that is coordinated across its hospitals, as well as our many ambulatory sites. 
with patients requiring advanced care coming to us here on the Morristown campus to the Gagnon Cardiovascular Institute. Morristown has been the top ranked program for cardiology and heart surgery in New Jersey for many of the last years. And not a surprise if you look at what we have by way of expertise in virtually all dimensions of cardiac care. Now we have provided patients for provided care for patients with advanced heart failure for many years, including mechanical assist device LBADS. And we also have provided pre and generally later post-transplant care. But having this partnership with NYU will allow us to grow these capabilities. And as others have already said, to expand our ability to provide heart transplant and advanced cardiac care to many more patients in the state of New Jersey. As a cardiologist, I consider myself very lucky to lead cardiology and heart surgery for Atlantic Health System. And the, this day where we're making this announcement makes me particularly happy. We are thrilled that the relationship between Atlantic and NYU Langone is now official. And we're very excited about what this means for our patients and our community. Thank you. Thank you. Our final speaker is Dr. Sharon Engel, the chair of the Department of Medicine at Overlook Medical Center. Thank you. So it really does bring me great, great pleasure to um, introduce this alliance on the front of liver care, uh, liver disease and transplant. Um, here at Overlook, we have fairly robust services on a, with a large, vast clinical spectrum. But one of the missing pieces um, involved for hepatic care or liver care really is the transplant service. And bringing this transplant service here in alliance with NYU Langone brings that missing piece uh, in addition to, again, our robust um, care that encircles our patient in liver disease. This alliance will allow us to continue to diagnose, manage, and treat a broad spectrum of liver diseases and offer our patients access to renowned transplant care. You know, I am a hospital medicine doc by trade, and I take care of a ton of uh, sick patients in the hospital. And some of the sickest patients are our liver patients, uh, our patients with li advanced liver disease. And really, this truly brings great pleasure to me to be able to offer this service to those patient populations uh, with our partnership. As uh, Dr. Montgomery referenced, uh, under Dr. Harmeet Kalia, NYU's Director of Transplant Outreach for Liver, he'll be working with us very closely and actually be providing on-site care while he's also uh, clinically working at NYU in order to be able to give access to this expertise for our patient population, something you know, again, that I think will be a great benefit to our patients. Interestingly, Dr. Kalia and the team here clinically already have a lot of established relationships. So although this is new and we're pioneering this uh, relationship more formally, we do have these established clinical relationships already. Uh, in fact, so much so that we've already transplanted even uh, our first liver patient at NYU that came from Overlook Medical Center. And it is these close relationships that have allowed this to happen. I think that medicine is best served as a clinical team that is truly integrated and communicates as flawlessly as possible. For any patient or any doctor uh, that has worked with complex medical patients, I think we all know when we communicate better as a healthcare team, we better serve our patients and our patient populations. This team I know already does this. So I think much of the care going forward will only be enhanced both by the expertise at NYU Langone and the expertise we have here at Overlook. As already mentioned, we do already have local expertise on site here uh, for our patients uh, short of transplant. So we will have uh, the NYU transplant team and hepatology team working with our local experts in liver surgery, in uh, liver tumor care, in metabolic medicine, in interventional radiology and advanced endoscopy. Uh, so we're really set up here at Overlook to be able to take care of patients in a very comprehensive manner 
and take care of them where they need to be taken care of, closer to their friends and their family. Finally, I think this really meets our mission of meeting the patient where they need to be met. Um, it, it, this alliance expands on our already high caliber care that we have here throughout Atlantic um, uh, and specifically at Morristown and Overlook with transplant being the next step forward. I would also like to thank, thank as uh, Dr. Gillum has thanked, the senior leadership team, uh, both at NYU Langone and uh, Overlook Medical Center, Morristown Medical Center and Atlantic Health as a total, uh, because they really have all had the vision to make this happen with two high caliber institutions that really have integrated and understood each other from what's important, putting patients at the center of care. Thank you. That concludes our prepared speaking portion of today's event. We will now open this up to questions from members of the media. Reporters, if you would like to please notify us of your intent to ask a question by using the raise hand button. We also ask that you introduce yourself before asking your question. Thank you. Hey everybody, this is Luke Margolis. Um, I understand that some folks may be having some difficulty finding the hand raising button. Um, if you are able to please, uh, for the reporters on the line, please just um, maybe one at a time as best we can, try to uh, unmute yourselves and, and ask your questions, but please just introduce yourselves for the benefit of, of our panel, please. Hey, it's Tom Bergeon from ROI and Jay. Can I jump in? Please do Tom, thank you. Hey, um, great stuff. Listen, there, there was a thought about how more there's going to be more opportunity to do, to do transplants and more hearts and livers, uh, uh, in a sense, are available. Can you talk to why that is? is? Is that a recent thing, as in the last six months or the last five years? Um, this is obviously much needed. How come there's more ability now to do it than before? Um, I'm happy to, uh, to take that. Um, question. So, um, you know, traditionally, um, particularly in this part of the country, the, the waiting times um, for um, hearts and livers um, have been um, longer than other uh, parts of the country. That has in, in part to do between the incidence of um, end stage um, organ disease um, versus the um, organ availability or the um, number of organs that are donated per million uh, population. And, you know, honestly, um, neither of those have changed that much. I think what, um, you know, does happen in, in this field of transplantation is that um, you can really, there, there's really a lane for, um, uh, institutional achievement. In other words, um, if you have a center that's very aggressive about going out and looking at, at organs um, that might previously have been, have been turned down um, just based on the information that our um, surgeons would get 
um, from the organ procurement organizations because, I mean, honestly, there's no perfect organ out there. Obviously, if somebody um, is donating a heart, they've died um, from some terrible trauma. And, um, and so, you know, that takes its toll um, on any organ. Um, but our team has been willing to really go the extra mile. And, and I, I think, you know, in a way, um, the, the old saying that the rising tide lifts all the boats. I mean, just by our really aggressive um, um, stance in terms of trying to get the right organ for the right patient, um, we have really pushed um, a lot of the centers to be more like us. Um, and, you know, but even within that um, rising tide, I think we still stand out as um, an organization that is, um, is just looking at this different, that we have a different vision. Um, and um, so New Jersey in particular um, has, I think, not had transplant centers that, that had a similar vision and if you look, you know, over the years, um, the the people of New Jersey have been um, very generous in donating organs, but many of those organs have been leaving the state and and transplanted it in other states where there are more aggressive um, transplant centers. So um, I think if you if you add that all together, it you know that kind of answers your your question, and you know, and we have. In addition to that, um, expanded the sources of, of organs in ways that I, I touched on earlier. Um, the use of um, uh, hepatitis C um, positive organs. So, you know, the uh, the sad reality is that the uh, increase in the number of organs that are available that we have seen in the last. Um, really about seven to eight years has been largely um, a, 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 a um, result of the increase in the um, number of, uh, of uh, young people who are uh, dying from overdose. Um, and so the opiate crisis has really had a major impact on um, the number of organs that are available but 25% of those um, donors have hepatitis C. And traditionally we've only put hepatitis C organs and hepatitis C positive recipients. And there are far more donors than possible recipients for those organs. So those organs, more than 50% of them were being discarded. And um, when I was at, at Johns Hopkins, before I came here, we developed a protocol for treating patients um, who received the hepatitis C positive organ who are hepatitis C negative with these new drugs that are available um, that cure hepatitis C. And um, it, there's been a tremendous expansion in the number of organs that are available um, uh, from the centers that use those organs in this way. For instance, we've done um, over 200 transplants from hepatitis C positive donors um, in the past uh, three years, which is really astounding when you think about it. Um, and so, you know, it's those kinds of things, um, at our, our use of, um, uh, of uh, hearts from uh, patients who have died a cardiac death. That's another innovation. There, there are many others um, that um, have allowed us to really, you know, push the envelope and make more organs available to people who need them. I think if I could add one thing, I think in hearing Dr. Montgomery answer your question, you, you, you get a sense of the innovation, the vision that, that drives their, their program. And that among other things has been uh, one of the things that has been very appealing to us about working with NYU and now having them as our official partner. If anyone else has a question, please feel free to unmute yourself and ask it. We'll, uh, we'll give a little bit of time for that to happen.
All right, it's Tom from ROI. I'll jump in with a follow-up. Um, you know, let's talk a little bit about the New York, New Jersey relationship. And I think a lot of time in healthcare, New, New Jersey, for better or worse, has been viewed as the, the JV version and, and the little stepbrother. Um, is this a situation where I understand NYU, there's a lot to help there, but it would seem to me with the outstanding programs, especially at Morristown and Overlook, is there a situation where somebody might in New York City that might be saying, hey, you need to start out in New Jersey because they do things really well. We want you to get access to what Morristown's bringing and what Overlook is bringing on this. Talk about that relationship going both ways, not just New Jersey people going to New York. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't necessarily see it as New Jersey people going to New York. I see it as New Jersey people staying at home where they have unbelievable care um, from doctors that that they know are that and that are world class leaders. Um, they're coming to um, to NYU for the transplant event, and um, that's just smart, you know, uh, healthcare resource utilization. You know why? Why recreate um, something, you know, in two sites? I mean, our degree of confidence to really, really address your, your question um, in the care that's provided at Morristown and Overlook couldn't be higher because that reflects directly on our statistics and, and our ability to continue to do transplants at NYU. If we didn't have this level of confidence that these patients would be cared for so well before and after the transplant, this wouldn't be possible. And this, and I think that's even what makes it even more um, unique is that, you know, in a way um, we, we trust the care so much that we're, you know, willing to, um, you know, have that directly reflect back on us. And, and, and I think that is going to be um, a wonderful uh, reflection, and and that's how that's how we feel about this partnership. And to add a New Jersey um, perspective um, to uh, that question, I think the um, uh, this is day one. This is our uh, official announcement of this uh, uh, new uh, agreement for uh, other programs here at the Gagnon Cardiovascular Institute on the Morristown Medical Center campus. We actually frequently see patients who come to us from, uh, from New York. Uh, we see patients who come to us from other parts of uh, New York State, the, uh, not just Manhattan. We see people who come to us from Connecticut, from Pennsylvania. And for some of our programs, we have pre-COVID seen people who have come to us from outside the country. So we, um, I believe, I know that, that uh, when the word gets out about the quality of the care that we provide, about the can't beat it patient experience that we're able to provide here at Morristown, I strongly believe that we will continue to attract patients from outside our uh, traditional catchment area. And I will just, um, you know, give you a kudos for Team New Jersey. You know, I think many of us are Team New Jersey. And, um, but I do think the alliance here really does make sense. And um, as many have mentioned, you're going to get that high level expertise care close to home. Um, but I do think that we will see a broader patient population, um, even just in New Jersey, um, you know, more uh, broader than we may see in other uh, areas. So um, I think when philosophies align across institutions, uh, it, it, it doesn't necessarily need to be a competitive force. Um, and it really does truly become a partnership. I think you put it brilliantly there. It, this is two very compatible organizations and how we put the patient at the center of everything that we do. Seamless care, coordinated, highest quality care. That's why we're so excited about this because this is two very strong organizations coming together around one of the most complex parts of medical care. And so that's why we, we all just couldn't be really prouder uh, to get this uh, moving and it's already moving. So great, thank you. We have time for a few more, if, uh, if there are any others. Um, we'll give it another couple seconds. Tom, unless you want to go again. <laughs> Hi, Alex Kasich here from Modern Healthcare. 
Uh, thank you for taking the time this afternoon. I'm wondering, in terms of the impact COVID has had on the number, on the supply of, of organs, you know, we saw traumas down and accidents and what have you, and uh, understand that, you know, a lot of the organs come from, you know, car crashes and, and other types of uh, emergencies. So, you know, has, has that had an impact just on the supply of livers and hearts available? Uh, we, you know, after um, the, the initial time when, you know, most transplant centers were shut down for uh, a number of weeks, um, we've seen a, a steady increase in um, organs that are available. And, and in fact, we're on target this year to exceed, you know, our projections and, and really all, all the organs that we transplant. Um, so, you know, I think there, the one thing that really hasn't been mentioned is that there some, have been some changes um, to uh, the allocation system um, for deceased donors in both heart and liver in the last few years that also, you know, have favored um, organs coming um, to the New York metropolitan area. Um, and so, um, you know, that, that has helped as well. Um, there's been a more equitable redistribution of organs. Um, so all, all these things, you know, uh, we, we, we did, you know, of course, see a, a, a downturn in organ donation for a short period of time uh, during the surge um, in New York. But um, since then, there's really just been a steady improvement. All right, we'll do a last call for any further questions. And just as an advisory, again, we are recording. So if anybody needs to get in touch with us, we're, we are available. If that, I'll, I'll turn it back over to our moderator for some closing remarks. Thank you to all our participants and to everyone who joined us today. This concludes today's event. If you have any further questions or would like a copy of today's event, please reach out to the public relations team members for either Atlantic Health System or NYU Langone. Thank you and have a great day.